unmute. Okay, now try calling me and see what happens. Start video. No, you don't want to. I, yeah, I, Andy, I'm not starting video. I'm just in the Zoom. Nope, it's still coming up. This isn't going to work. We're going to have to. Um, hello. Um, okay, this isn't working. So go get Amina and Michael and tell them. Well, I have my laptop. It's just. The Good morning, Amina. Would you like to test your audio? Yes, please. Can you hear me? Sounds great. And Karen, would you like to test your audio? One, two, three. One, two, three. Hello. All right, you sound great too. We're going to go ahead. Um, if you don't have any questions at the moment until Joe gets on, we're going to go ahead and uh, continue with the music. I don't know. That's it a should good be, question. It should be KW. It should be KW.
Amina. Hi, you. Sorry, I was saying hi, darling, but I was muted. <laughs> yeah, I didn't hear you. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm glad to see you. Good to see you, too. I love your digs. Okay, can I move in? Thank you. Of course you can. <laughs> so I interviewed a, a builder yesterday, and this was one of his homes. And oh. uh, I put it as my backdrop, and then I'm like, oh, I can use it today. It's pretty now. Yeah, it is. Wow. Well. Where do I sign? <laughs> Everything okay? Everyone good? Yes, everyone's good. good. Oh, look, Karen's here. Yes. I don't, I'm, I'm going to fill up my water bottle. I'll be back. All right. We're good? Voice, um, sound is on, Amina? Yes, we can hear you. Great. You guys yeah. look awesome. Testing, testing. Sounds great, ladies. I appreciate it. So we are at 10.01. So let's go ahead and start this thing. So I'm going to screen share our slides today. Um, so just want to start off with, did everybody see it? We're good to go on that, Amina? Perfect. Uh, so Joe Martin here for the KW, Virginia, West Virginia region. We got the pleasure of having Amina as our uh, moderator in the HBC group out of our McLean Great Falls office. So ladies, want to say first off, thank you from me and uh, your time today. So I'm really appreciating the content and uh, energy you'll bring to the region. So thank you for that. Um, going to the next slide here, we're going to go through just opening remarks, red day update with some hours and dollars donated. COVID for the region, then we'll get into really the meat of the conversation with the ladies here. Um, going in, just want to give an update on just Red Day numbers. We had 23 communities and organizations served. We had over $55,000 raised, 114 hours, and we had 489 total volunteers. We're still getting more and more pictures and updates coming in from the different market centers. So by next Friday, we should have be able to do some slideshows and get some updates for the different market centers and communities that we served in. Just going to quote, great things in business are never done by one person, they're done by a team of people. I think um, what we're about to see from the HBC group is a proof of that. Uh, I also wanted to think, I was talking to a uh, colleague of mine last night, and we were talking about coaching, mentoring, and impact. And what I thought was interesting is we brought up the idea of how do we motivate people and how do we look at ourselves internally about being our best self? And when you look at the world we're in, especially with a lot of our motivations being instant gratification, the idea of being the best version of yourself conflicts with the idea of instant gratification. And what I mean by that is when you're individualized and what's in it for me type of mentality, you lose the ability to think about larger scale impact with others and those around you. When you're thinking about, I'm only gonna do what feels good or is pleasurable, meaning like there's no pain, you don't actually get the experience of what it's like to go through a tough time and to be able to pull from those experiences and realize that this too shall pass and you rob yourself of the experiences of understanding perspective and being able to apply that into tough times moving forward, realizing that you have the confidence to move forward and to create. And I think when you don't go through, and then the final piece is the instant gratification, meaning you don't have the willpower to stand through and get through the storm and all these different things that we've had in a, in our, world robs us of being our best self because our best self has a lot to do with the impact of people we have around us understanding that we are stronger and that the success really comes from stamina and being able to go through different trials and tribulations to make yourself better and those experiences what is what form you and i just think it's important for us to understand that as we go through some uncharted territory and what's on the other side and where where's the stability is that how do we look and realize that these experiences are what's shaping us and actually make us better as we come out of this? So that's just my leadership thought of the day. Going in for COVID updates, um, 
Virginia, West Virginia, it's still in phase one of opening through today. Uh, they're going to be evaluating how where phase two will start. From number standpoint, you've got four, 48,000 total positive cases in Maryland with 2,300 deaths. Virginia getting at 40,000 positive cases with 1,200 total deaths. And then Washington, D.C. at 8,400. Still seeing some flattening and some descending numbers here. Uh, you got a little bit of a spike in Virginia, I think, because of what, from what I've been reading, is mainly that you've had more available testing in Virginia for people to actually see that they're testing positive. So it's just a numbers region. Going into West Virginia, you got 18, almost 1,900 positive cases with 74 deaths. Uh, and you're starting to see some spiking or just some increases in West Virginia. I think it's also has to do with availability of testing and tracking. Um, so going into it, let's get right in. So Amina, I'm gonna pass the baton right over to you and then the ladies at HBC. So it's all yours. Thank you so much. I just wanted to mention something. I don't know if you noticed, but um, I just read someplace this morning that CVS has opened testing sites throughout the country. And just in Virginia, 39 testing sites. So I was really happy to read that. Uh, well, thank you so much for inviting us this morning. It's a pleasure and an honor uh, for me to interview our number one team, HBC group. And we have Karen and Lizzie and Jenny but I'm gonna let them introduce themselves so they can tell you a little bit more about them. And then we're gonna go into some really, really important um, things that I loved what you just put on there that um, nobody ever achieves anything alone. And we're gonna talk a little bit about what they have been achieving in this uh, health crisis as a team and how they helped our community. So girls, take it over. So I'm Karen Briscoe, and I am the principal owner of the HBC Group, uh, Keller Williams. I've been a licensed uh, residential agent since uh, 2002, and I was in commercial real estate um, right out of college in the early 80s, and then was the predominant caregiver for our two children uh, when my husband's career moved us to the D.C. metro region in um, 1994 and decided to re-enter the workforce. and went on the commercial side and uh, found uh, that I really found my calling in residential real estate. I like to say I, I have the hard and soft skills. I have the hard skills of commercial being negotiation, strategy, market knowledge, uh, that type of thing. And then the relationship stuff is the soft side on, um, the, which is more predominant because it's such an emotional experience, most people buying and selling homes. Uh, the HBC Huckabee stands for Sue Huckabee, who uh, is the founder of our team. And when I became, on, became a team member, uh, she was number 10 in the nation at the time, all agents. And then I became her partner in 06. Um, she passed away sadly in 08, the same month that the financial markets crashed. And then I moved the team over to Keller Williams in 09. And that's a story in itself. But um, and then Lizzie Conroy uh, joined me, and she's the C in the HBC. So I'm going to let her introduce herself. So I'm Lizzie Conroy. As Karen mentioned, I joined Karen in 2009, and I um, I entered into the profession um, coming off of caring for our children. And I had um, attended school in Washington D.C., stuck around for many years, and then really kind of jumped into my career in my, my mid thirties, fast forward a decade, well, ele almost 11 years now that Karen and I have been together. And we all, Sue, Karen and I all knew each other from the same church. And the great thing about where we've come full circle is I got into the business in 2000 at the bottom of the market, which was the best time to get into the business. And Karen has mentored me the entire way and I have never worked anywhere else other than at Keller Williams McLean Great Falls, and it has been a blessing. And I'm Jenny McClintock. I am the newest member of the team, um, joining Karen and Lizzie back into when I again when I first started my career in real estate, which was in 2014, and then within the last year got named to be a vice president. And so our production in 2019 was 91 million uh, with about 100 transactions. So you can do the math, 900,000 average sales price. Uh, 2020, we're on track to actually 
surpass that goal because to date we have 48 million sold and under contract um, with a higher dollar average, believe it or not, we're well over a million now. So uh, we've been consistently ranking in Keller Williams International in the top 100 and consistently ranking the top team in the region for the luxury market, um, selling uh, most of the product being in the upper brackets. Awesome. So tell us a little bit about how big is your team and how is it structured? So you've met the primary, I'm the rainmaker as a general rule, although Lizzie's raking the rain this year, so it's always mm -hmm. helpful to have strong, um, a strong bitch, let's just say, because uh, some, sometimes uh, different market segments are stronger. And Jenny's, uh, in, Lizzie and I both live in McLean inside the Beltway. Uh, again, our predominantly our, our clientele is in the upper brackets. And but Jenny's located in Reston, which is in a tends to be in a lower price range. Um, so actually, that's really good because <laughs> we've been able to flatten the curve because <laughs> mm -hmm. um, the upper brackets often take longer in a very uh, um, a sophisticated clientele, if you will, and a lot of work and marketing. Um, so we have a few other agents on our associate agents on our team. We have a um, Liz, uh, Christina is our marketing listing coordinator. One thing we made a pivot and change in the uh, during COVID-19 right at the beginning was we went from a, a staff member transaction coordinator to a um, offsite transaction quarter that, that is not an employee but more um, per deal and that's something that we can definitely talk about but we my husband works with us on the team he's just the gopher he does everything everybody else doesn't want to do. But we're not the ones that are doing 90% of the transactions. All right. So you have been through some really tough markets. And this, what we're going through right now, is a health crisis, and it's different. How different has this been for all three of you? And what did you have to overcome or learn? What did you adjust during this time? So I've been in the business the longest because I actually started commercial real estate out of college in 1981, which is what was a recession. So I've actually been in five recessions <laughs> um, all the way from the savings and loan crisis in Texas in the 80s. Um, we had a, another recession, if you may recall, in 91. We had uh, the 9-11 the, um, and the tech bust in the early 2000s. Everybody has muscle memory from the 08 crisis. Uh, so I took action right away, recognizing the wisdom of the red book, <laughs> uh, you know, to, to get real with your numbers, the red light, green light. We made a number of, like I said, changes to the way we structure our team and our staff, and that was instrumental. Um, Lizzie, as she mentioned, talk, came on the, in the business in 09, so she has a different perspective, so I'll let her share that. And, and Jenny, they, they've been more on the ground, actually, doing deals, so they can share how that's been impacting their business. Yeah, I think that one of the great things about our team, as Karen alluded to before, is that we really have diversified um, our product offering and our markets. So as Karen mentioned, she and I are in McLean, typically an upper bracket um, product. But we also, we give our agents the freedom to go out and um, really hit the ground and be in the field and hustle for listings in all price ranges. Now, naturally, being in the Washington, D.C. area, we have, on average, a higher average sales price. Um, but I think that's one of the things that helps sustain us through um, the downturns um, in terms of uh, being able to really to get out there and hustle for all the business that's, that comes from, for example, we haven't been able to do open houses. So we started pivoting to um, reaching out to our client base through a bomb bomb video platform that has been extremely well received. And we can talk more about the messaging that we had to um, really um, modify and make appropriate for, for this market. So I'll let Jenny talk about that. Yeah, I think, you know, coming into the, all of this, we did not know what to expect like everybody else. And I think that Karen and Lizzie certainly started out with the team that we were going to move forward with our, our business and we were going to have to pivot and do it in a different way. 
And we were fortunate in that we'd already kind of started to look at the video platform to our clients, maybe a little bit later than some other people had done, but we already knew before COVID that that was going to be the way we were gonna start messaging with our client base. And that just got ramped up right away because we already had homes that were being listed and we knew we had to get messaging out there about them without being able to have open houses and in some cases without even any showings. But right when this whole thing started and I heard Gary Keller talk about you got to bulletproof your transactions, that's what we really talked about the very first couple of weeks that this was going on because we had a lot of things under contract and we knew that you know really being able to strategize together every single day which we did which was the best thing we ever did was to really connect with each other every morning and not lament what was going on but certainly share ideas and really be futuristic in how we were going to to handle and serve our clients during this time. And I, that's really one of the key things that um, I think, our, and looking back, our team is all uh, thankful that we did. So when the governor uh, issued the stay at home orders or safer at home orders, uh, we had been working towards going remote. And so we were like, okay, this is a test case. What does it look like? <laughs> so we moved everybody remote and uh, we implemented a 9 a.m. Zoom call, and I am a part of a coaching platform with the Hal Elrod um, program of Miracle Morning, and one of the people in that has this uh, program called Changes, and you can't see it, but there's these little yellow cards. Um, the Changes is questions for when individually or at, you know, coaching or as a team, you're going through change, and then it helps right. you create what's called generative um, dialogue. So it, it, as someone said, rather than lamenting, mm -hmm. <laughs> we talked about what we could do mm -hmm. in how we could make it work. And so the changes stands for an acronym, the different questions, uh, C was for cognition, H is for heart, um, A is for action, N is for nourishment, G is for guts, E is for environment and S is for spiritual. So every day, one of the questions would be posed and uh, we gave people the opportunity to pass if they wanted to, but we really wanted to hear everybody's voices. And we mentioned bringing on a new team member in this. And uh, today we concluded our morning Zoom 9 a.m. calls uh, because we feel like this was, we decided we wanted this to be uh, a COVID experience that we could all look back to and say it really helped us grow and together and become better than before. And today we all went around and said what we were thankful for and what came up over and over again was thankful for this, the Zoom calls that we were able to connect. Uh, once we had our question, we would take about 10 minutes to just talk about the state of the market, what was going on, how we were being um, effective and impactful for our clients and brainstorming if somebody was needed some ideas on how to move something forward. So beautiful. Um, I know you guys have a lot of guts, but let's talk a little bit about the heart part of that changes. Um, so you did a lot um, for our community um, and our, our office did, our whole region did. We had a very successful Red Day. But what kind of things did you guys implement right at the beginning of it, helping McLean here and businesses in McLean? And how did that impact you and your team? Jenny talked about our campaign. We live here, we work here, we give back here, your agents for life. Uh, when Lizzie and I became partners in 2009, the one thing she said is, I want to look like my picture. <laughs> so because of that mandate that I agreed to, uh, I agreed to every five years, we as a team would go through a brand refresh and that we would all get new photos, we would have new signage, we would stay current with the market. And so 2020 was a brand refresh year. So we actually started all of this in January with our photography. And so when COVID hit, we're like, we want to ramp this up. And so that we live here, we work here, we get back here campaign. Um, I'll let Lizzie uh, share a little bit more about that. And also we've always, well, since 2012 had a um, 
a mission-based company and in terms of giving back and we have a charity group we call community charity champions so we have been raising funds as a team for these local organizations and charities since then but lizzie can talk a little bit more about it so ccc we've been doing it for eight years and it's um typically in the format of um having dinner at a local restaurant where we invite, we do it once a month, um, 10 times a year for local organizations and um, charities such as our food bank called SHARE, um, Acclaim Project for the Arts. We also do school PTAs, Little League. There's another organization um, that helps the elderly. And what we did is we actually switched it up. We moved up SHARE and replaced that with like McLean Youth Lacrosse because that wasn't going on. And then we also, then we decided that, you know, um, we wanted to support our little league and we did a GoFundMe. And so we really pivoted on that and um, it was very well received. And in terms of getting our messaging out through, as I mentioned, our bomb bomb videos, what we have discovered is that a lot of people don't really know what's going on in the market. They just see COVID-19 and everything crashing on the media and they don't actually know that under a million and a quarter, there's no inventory. And this is an ideal market opportunity for a move up buyer doing an arbitrage, right? Where you sell in a lower price point at a peak price and then you buy up at a, at a, um, at maybe some, a little bit of a discount. So um, those are the types of messages in, along with our community involvement that we have been dripping to our clients through the bomb bomb video platform um, twice a week. And it is, the response has been mm -hmm. amazing. And Jenny can maybe give, give some examples of, of that. Yeah, I think that um, we were very, uh, at first we were kind of like, well, maybe we should send a message out to our clients. And so we, we kind of did an overall, we're, we're, while we're physically distant, we want to socially connect. That was sort of our first and it, you know, they weren't, they weren't great, you know, and nobody's, <laughs> everybody's new at this. And so we're, we were trying to figure out how to do it. And had, we had Christine, we did had an amateur videographer and, <laughs> and, but it still, it, it got some momentum going in and it got us thinking and we got better at it. And our messaging became very succinct because we were seeing and hearing from our, our existing client base, you know, the things that they really wanted to hear about, like, you know what what is the whole process of sanitizing and showing houses and 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 you know listing homes and what is the whole virtual opportunity now that still is going to keep um, real estate in a and moving forward and and what is the market showing that's what i think more than anything i'm hearing from my clients is like that, that some people don't even really know that real estate's happening so we would pick a topic and we, you know, we'd send it out each week and we, we got a lot of really good, it just goes to our client base, but that's over 300 people, you know, that, that receive our bomb bomb videos. And we got a lot of positive response. I've had several clients call me and being grateful and like, oh my gosh, you know, I didn't realize that there's an inventory shortage still. And I didn't realize that, you know, that there's still opportunity to sell my house today. Um, and so we feel really good about that. Um, and, and it, I think it's something we'll probably continue to do. It was great. I, I just loved your, all of your pictures, Jenny, in front of the places where you were helping and all of your Lizzie and Karen outside of the restaurant. When nobody was coming out and you couldn't see a soul on, on the street, you guys were collecting stuff um, and standing outside of the restaurant, helping small business, helping everyone. It was just unbelievable, blew my mind. So thank you guys for that. So let's talk a little bit about um, on your personal level, you had to be strong. We have to be strong for everyone. We gotta be strong for our teams. You have to be strong for your clients. You gotta be strong at home with the children, the school, uh, having children that are maybe not here. So how did you, do this on a personal level. How was this for you? Well, I was probably the, the spearheader or the leader of this. I, I know that both Lizzie and Jenny had family members in New York City, and I was like, you get them home. <laughs> get them out of there and get them home, and they could, they could talk about that. But I, I again, I, I mentioned the muscle memory when you said, you know, this, the, the uniqueness of COVID-19 is, is it really is impacting people's sense of security and safety. And that is a basic human need of, you know, Abraham Maslow. And, and so making sure that everybody was safe was the first priority 
Um, and I'm a little bit of a mother bear on that. <laughs> uh, but that, that I think is been uh, received well. Lizzie's the one with children at home. We have a couple of fan, uh, team members that have children at home and they certainly have experienced different kinds of challenges. So I'll let them address that. I mean, essentially, I'm, I was grateful because my kids are, you know, uh, 12 and 14, so they were fairly self-sufficient. Um, but I think that, you know, Karen, as, as she mentioned, sort of spearheading this, giving your team members the flexibility to, and the freedom and, the tr and trusting them that they're going to do what's best, not only for their families, but also what's best for the team. And so giving, having that flexibility really helped me kind of come through this experience. And then to also be able to share about it on our 9 a.m. call, right? I might be experiencing some, like, I said, look, I don't know what I'm going to do about my kids this summer. I mean, they're self-sufficient, but I don't know. And then Karen said, look, have you thought about calling a college, you know, age student to help take them around and go on hiking or whatever? And so we're not only there for each other to talk about markets and stats, but also to help how we manage our day-to-day -day lives. Because ultimately, if you don't have that foundation, it's going to be really hard to come out on the other end, um, you know, on, on top of all of this. Well, and share about Rosie. So Lizzie's <laughs> sister, Rosie. Yeah, so my sister, Rosemary, is a sommelier in New York at a very high-end restaurant. And Karen was like, you got to get her back here. So I remember it was like March 16th. It was a Monday. And she got on a plane and she came here and stayed here for seven weeks. And we actually utilized her in an online client wine tasting that was very well received. And so we were got really creative with how to connect with our clients and provide something that was a little bit of a fun social outlet in times of, you know, being bored at a Groundhog Day. <laughs> and so, and Jenny also, her, her adult daughter. Did yeah, one of the silver linings for my husband and I with COVID is that our, our daughter, who's 31 and had been living in Brooklyn for the past five years, she and her, she just got engaged in early February. So she and her fiance came down that same, like March 14th, March 15th, rented a car and, you know, for 10 days. And we were like, yeah, come on. They're like, you know, we might as well, we're gonna be working at home. They knew they were gonna be working at home because they both took subways to Manhattan every work day. And they'd already been told, okay, you can work from home. They're like, well, we might as well work at home and in Reston where there's five bedrooms and five and a <laughs> half bathrooms and they have 600 square feet. So it's so funny to think about that we were so naive. Well, we didn't know what we didn't know. They, we, they thought they'd be there 10 days. Well, they're still here. It's been 10 weeks. They've already gone back up to Brooklyn, emptied out their apartment. Uh, my, my basement is now a graveyard of their furniture. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's such an example of how so many people are changing their environments because of this. And, I, and it makes me, us realize that we, we are right in the thicket of all that. I mean, I'm already, you know, I've been introduced to, to some new people that, that are more my age. They recently, you know, downsized into a 55 plus community. And now they're like, help. Like we gotta, we want a bigger space. We wanna move out to, Aldi, Willisford. So it's like, it's changing. We all know this. I mean, it's just, I feel very, we're, we feel very grateful that we can really be the ones to help people a lot through, through this time. And we see all that opportunity. I mean, the, the Chinese symbol for danger, right, is both, um, I mean, of, of, uh, of um, change is both danger and opportunity. And we see the opportunity because we, well, first of all, we're blessed that Virginia, and I think West Virginia declared because of Homeland Security, um, that real estate is essential. And it is essential because it's a basic human need. And we're seeing all the human needs, all the ways that we can connect with people and impact and improve their lives and help them make these transitions because we think that there's going to be even more of that going forward. That, you know, we've seen the, the jokes of the, the people who are, you know, with the kids and all of them, now their home is beyond just sanctuary and their, their sheltered place, but their home is also uh, where they exercise and where they homeschool and where they work and where they uh, entertain. And so it is now 
a really, um, we feel like we're on the cusp of a future that is very bright. Um, we had projected 2020 to be our best year ever, and we're on board for that to take place. It's definitely, the stage light is definitely on the homes right now because everyone is right now uh, figuring out, is it enough? Is it not enough? What room should I have? What room should I give up? It's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting time. And, and how many blessings that we actually had our kids with us and that you could spend some time. Whenever would we in the middle of the May spend so many hours with, with them, right? So we have to look at some positives uh, here, which, was, which is a blessing. So, um, Anything that will change the way you do business going forward that came out of this crisis? Anything? I know that um, there was a lot of talk about people working at home, but we are getting people back in the office and we couldn't even keep people out of our office because people love coming to environment where they're productive and it's a little bit harder to do it from home. So anything that you guys are changing going forward that came out of this health crisis? Well, you mentioned that we thought it would be, as I said, a test case, because would we go forward moving, working remotely? And we uh, came to the realization that we, there's a lot of synergy that happens and connectivity. Uh, we brainstorm, you know, spontaneously when you're just uh, together physically. <laughs> so we've decided to come back to the office. As you know, Amina, we're going to continue uh, with our space that we have and our team. Now we do have this one change of the transaction quarter uh, coordinator is an offsite person. So uh, she will not be coming into the office, but everybody else is, will, will I, I, I can say business as usual because, you know, after 9-11, as you may recall, life was never the same again. And we anticipate the same uh, with this COVID-19, we will have, you know, changes that will be impacting our society and our business going forward that uh, we won't be going back. And, you know, the thing is, is there's been, you know, people say, well, I want to go back to normal. Well, there were some things about the, the past that really many people are going, wow, this is, we've seen some positives to the slowing down and to the spending more time with family. I, another positive I see as a real estate trend is, and this happened after 9-11, people are gonna want more, more space, are gonna want more physical distance, they're gonna want their home to be their sanctuary, and I think it's us out here in the suburbs where <laughs> uh, we were seeing a trend towards urbanization and walkability, and we were losing a lot of people from the suburbs. So we're like, going, wow, this is, who would have thought that this is gonna make Great Falls great again? <laughs> but it but it is and so um we can i'll let lizzie and jenny share but team wise uh, we anticipate we're going to take the best of what happened and we're going to uh, not go forward with the things that didn't work and that we uh, have pivoted and shifted from and i think when it comes to working with clients in the future listing homes we'll always put these sanitizing procedures in place that we that we really, we have to. Um, I don't think that's going to change. And I think that um, the other thing that, and I'm sure you've all seen it, that we were all sort of, you know, we used video, but not, not really to its fullest capacity, even what you can just do in-house. And this has really forced us to have these conversations and to work out these procedures and these systems to make it as efficient and effective and caught, you know, and and cost effective as possible. And so I'm really proud of how we've pivoted on the technology front um, to again, not add on these layers of work, but how can we work it into our existing systems and utilize the technology on our platform that, you know, that we have. So I've been really excited about that. Same. I was telling our staff that now is the time to look at all of our systems, procedures, tweak it, change it, do something because we have now this time. And we missed you guys so much. We, we just missed all of our agents. I would go upstairs and it would be so, so lonely and dark. I even missed the dog. I missed everybody, everybody. Just seeing that doggy over there, it was just like, oh, they need to come back. So I'm looking forward to everyone coming back. Um, so finally, I don't know how much more time we have, but um, anything that, uh, 
you know today that you didn't know yesterday? Anything that really, really uh, made an impact on, on our aha from all of this, personally or professionally? Well, for me, you know, I, I, my whole real estate career, I have been part of this amazing team, but it, and been grateful every day for just the collaboration, the expertise, the coaching. But during this time, you know, when um, you're, you're entering a crisis personally and professionally, and you don't really know what the future holds. And I felt very safe with my family and then my kids, you know, being around. And, but professionally, I think if I had not I, I feel so grateful that we have, we are really feeling like we're coming out of the tail end of this and we had some dark weeks and some real question marks, but it was just so great to be part of this, this, these experts and, and these friends of mine that really uh, helped us all understand that, you know, being just like what Steve Jobs said, you know, being, being the success is not just one person, it's the team. And we never felt that more during this, these last 10 weeks. Thank you. All right. Be any I, agree. Um, I, agree. Mm -hmm. I would say that uh, the acronym together, everyone achieves more is something that we can attest to here that uh, as a team, and we are a small team, but we produce big results. Again, if you go back to our numbers, when you look at what the, you know, really 90% of the business is what these three ladies, uh, we're, we're um, really, we produce it because we have this team that, that uh, enables us to be able to perform at our highest and best selves. Thank you. Thank you. Joe, do we? Do we got time for some questions? I mean, is there any questions you want to ask the group? I mean, personally, I want to know, how are you handling objections with listings uh, or with sellers that are still living in the home? are going to list the property so it's not a vacant listing. How are you handling that? So I have one going live today. Um, it's fascinating. I've known these people since uh, 25 years and they were going to go with Redfin. Um, <laughs> and so when uh, COVID happened and what happened with uh, Redfin and other agencies like that, um, we had a conversation and I said, you know, these are the times where you really experience is pays off in the long run. I, I don't know what it is you think you're going to say, but if they don't make it happen, it's not going to be any savings at all. And um, they took that to heart. Um, I did discuss with them uh, that if they have a place to go, it really would be beneficial if they would go there. And so that's the plan. So they have a lake house. So the plan is, is they're going to leave the house uh, today and be gone until we get it under contract and through the inspections. Um, they have, you know, some situations of compromised immunity. And I said, you know, that's what the best insurance I can give you is you not being present. Um, and we can give the full market um, uh, promotion that way. And they agreed to that. So, but I have another client and she actually happens to be a doctor and they were comfortable in the beginning with doing the virtual open houses, but then they came to the conclusion that they wanted to have, um, to continue with showings. And so as Jenny said, we have a, a um, supplies. <laughs> we have sanitizer and uh, wipes and gloves and masks and booties and we have everything available. And they were comfortable with that being um, and with the assurance that you know we're working with other real estate professionals are going to take all the precautions. One of the other things that we've done um, for our new listings is and I've done this every time I've had a listing and I've got two coming up next week is that we're only doing showings for the, for the first weekend during the open house time. And so we'll do a, we'll do an open house on Saturday. We'll be do an open house on Sunday and they're by appointment only. So it's, you know, I think it's not, then you don't have to, and we even have a sign in the front of the yard that say this home is open by appointment only. And if you don't have an appointment contact, the agent, she's inside. And so we're only letting one group in at a time and not allowing showings either out, outside those six hours, three hours each day. And then the, the hope is we're under contract by Monday. And if you're not, then you go to the plan B, but at least this, I think, and then the, and then the, the, the people that are 
living in the homes, the sellers, then they realize, okay, it's, it's a four hour window, Saturday and Sunday, and hopefully that's the only showings that I'm really gonna have to deal with, but it's tricky. And I'm not, you know, we're not sure how open houses are going to um, be handled moving forward, but that's how we're handling them. And I think real quickly, just giving, having all the options, right? You have your baseline, right? We do this, this, and this, when people come into the house, but then here are all the options we can give you. We can give you virtual, we can give you limited, we can give you carte blanche, we can give you, and really just say, putting the control in the client's hands. They wanna feel like they're in control. What are the questions we had? Anything in the chat box? Anybody want to type something in just to ask them? We've got a couple more minutes here. We've got about another 10 minutes just to Q&A and see, pick these awesome ladies' brains because they're obviously killing it out there in McLean and Great Falls. So I think this is an awesome, awesome opportunity to share that. I'll share that I've been, um, because of our production level, I've been in the Gary Keller um, mastermind. And for sure, in the very beginning, it was so fascinating or insightful for me to see what was going on in the other market areas. So and I even was sharing with Amina um, and our operating principal, uh, Ron Cathell, what I was seeing on the West Coast and what was happening in Colorado. And uh, they have, there's a private um, Facebook page and just watching the chatter and the things that they were doing. So we felt like because of that early recognizance, uh, I really felt like we were being uh, proactive when Gretzky has this quote that he skates to where the puck is going. So we felt like we were skating to the puck. We were going to the market questions and concerns and addressing them uh, early on rather than waiting um, until it became a crisis or a situation. Um, the other thing that comes to mind is what Jenny was talking about, bulletproofing the transactions. I remembered in the last financial market uh, crash and crisis how challenging it was to get not once they were in a contract to get them to close because you know what's going on in the financial markets with the um, you know in the beginning it was uh, the best of times because interest rates are so low and then the markets the the monetary policy caused the um, markets to lending portals to dry up and certain funding. Uh, capacities and then the concern of things like, you know, the, the closing of courthouses, <laughs> what happens if they close courthouses? Can we have recordation of deeds? I'm uh, no Marcus Simon, who's a principal at Echo Title, who also happens to be a delegate of Virginia. I remember on a Saturday I was out biking and I, I just had this epiphany, if they close the courthouse, we're not gonna close houses. And then what are we gonna do? And so I literally, I got on the phone with Marcus and I was like, what can you do? And he contacted the Virginia State. Um, uh, actually, they went all the way to well, ruling to the Supreme Court. Fortunately, they had already discussed, you know, crisis, um, what they were going to policies, and this was one of them. But then, then you also had the whole title front of, uh, well, okay, the deed doesn't get recorded, then can disbursements take place, and who's going to ensure that? All that was very early on. I felt all that. I heard all that. From the west coast and i got to the people fast here in our area that could do something about it so we do have a question um and it's from roma sika and i think maybe lizzie can answer that because she is doing a lot of dc how would you market a condo in dc in the reference to open houses there are no signs allowed no physical opens allowed um just a condo how would you do it lizzie um, well, if it's vacant, that's the best case scenario. If it's not vacant, I would not be doing any open houses. You also, you have, the people have to wear masks because my experience is that you'll go into these condos if there's an elevator, right? And then you're getting on the elevator with, with other people and um, it's a, you know, a tight area. I mean, I've, I've had um, two condo buyers in DC and I've gone, I went out multiple days over the last two months and I found that there, there hasn't been, again, if the property was vacant, it was so much easier. So I would say if, you, if there's some way that if it's occupied, if your client can move out, that's probably the best case scenario. If not, just continuing to follow those procedures and then making sure that you talk to the, if there's, 
If there is a condo manager on site, making sure you talk to them, follow the rules and regulations. Um, if it's not, if it's if it's a smaller boutique building or no nobody on site, um, you know, just talk to your client and make sure that um, that you know that people are following the safety precautions. So do that, a virtual. You could do a virtual open house with you in it. Yeah, virtual, absolutely. But I I found that I was able to get into every place that that we wanted to go. It was a little strange um, being in in a building where you know, not only are the residents there, the people who are coming to do work on the building are there, you know, so um, just make sure that you bring masks with you. You bring all the PPE with you in case your clients um, forget it, you know, everything that, you know. As uh, it is vacant, I'm referring online. What would you do online? If it's vacant, what would you do online? Mm -hmm. um, I've heard some people do it in terms of marketing or showing? Marketing. Marketing, I've heard some people are doing virtual staging these days because that's a really um, inexpensive way to kind of highlight the space, especially in condos, which are much smaller spaces. And then if they're really focusing on where the green spaces are around the condo, right? Because people want to get out, they want to get fresh air. So making sure you say that, um, I would say those are the things that you, that you really want to focus on. And we are having buyers make, you know, buy, condos especially that are not that they've never seen mm -hmm. I mean I had one in Falls Church and the, she never saw it she saw we had a virtual tour that I introduced and, and Christina um, videoed for us and, and it was it was it was occupied by a couple and two small children and so we had very limited showings only during the open house sort of period and then Somebody bought it. They never spent the first time they saw the place was during the walkthrough the day before they didn't even go to the home inspection because the home inspector would not allow anybody to be in. So people are buying them, you know, um, off your off your videos. And that's makes the video tour of the condo so extremely important. That was my biggest aha during this uh, from our agents. It was that we were all concerned. How are we going to do it? How do we look? Is the hair okay? It was all like selfish thinking of what are we doing? And the public didn't care. Just no. give me information. Walk me through it. And our agents were walking the streets, showing what stores are around, what's happening, where is the park? And all of that, people were just soaking it up. And, and so many sold. It's almost uh, they never even set the foot in, which was, which was just mind-blowing. And that is one thing that is unique about this market condition. Every, you know, correction is, has its um, opportunities. And low supply is actually what I think is going to bring us out of this fast. Um, is that because when supply is in demand, when there's more demand than supply, then people, buyers will do things that they wouldn't normally do, right? And so that is one of the benefits because if we had a high supply right now, then the buyers would be saying, no, I'm going to wait. You know, they're going to, um, they're going to, they would be playing the waiting game. And so the, that is one, one benefit of the market. And, and speaking of the, the videos in, in YouTube, be sure and get a hundred subscribers, <laughs> which we did a campaign in our office um, to get, and we all helped each other get over a hundred subscribers because then you can brand your YouTube channel and that makes it easier to push out your YouTube channel when you're marketing your listings. Yeah. And also interest rates, right? Interest rates are so low. It's pushing so many people like, I mean, they can't get any lower. Yeah. So it's, it's a great time. To Actually, that's the part of the arbitrage. So this is a message to the market is that this is an opportunity where you can sell really well at peak prices in a lower bracket price point and buy up and because the interest rates being so low, you could have a very, uh, you can make a great uh, buying. This is the best time to buy for those kind of scenarios for arbitrage. Smart people buying now. Got any, I see we got one more thing in the chat box here that uh, will be a recession, do you agree? All right, so let's wrap up with Melanie Williams's last question. So some experts are predicting that there will be a recession. Do you agree or you think this will impact and or do you think it will re impact real estate business? Well, when people lose jobs, 
then you know they're not going to be able to buy a house. Um, but there's a lot of different things about this than what uh, previous market corrections and recessions. And I talked about the supply and demand one. Supply and demand is like gravity. So in the 0809, supply kept increasing, it kept increasing, and demand kept going down. And so there was going to be, and also it was a lot of it was real estate related because the lending was um, making it so people were buying out of their really ability to afford. And so that led to the short sale and foreclosure crisis. Um, the difference in that now is that people do have a job loss or um, you know, some sort of um, impact to their uh, financial situation, which people have. I mean, it's, it's real. Um, they probably have equity and they have an ability to sell. Um, and so we anticipate we're not gonna see prices uh, going down significantly. Uh, we don't anticipate that. And we anticipate um, because this was uh, so related to the home that we're actually going to see more people putting you know, their financial and their resources into their home. And so we anticipate that um, in terms of the, the long-term benefits, we also, our market area in Northern Virginia, a couple of other predictions that I have are uh, like 9-11, we saw a buildup of Homeland Security. Uh, we're likely to see some sort of infrastructure in place for creating um, health care. I know we have NIH, but they're going to have to go beyond that, right? We're going to need something to um, address these possible um, health crises in the future because with like 9-11, we're not going to want to do that again. And then the whole travel, um, TSA or something, some sort of security system is going to be put in, into effect um, where people that are traveling abroad and coming into our country and or traveling domestically will, there'll be some sort of uh, verification of health, just like your credentials are verified. All that's going to require infrastructure. That's going to require, um, you know, government oversight. And because we're in the seat of government, we anticipate that, uh, and also technology advances will benefit. So I anticipate a, a, a positive out of this, although we do have the election this year, and that is a, a wild card, and I'm not going to get into that one. Well, I just want to say thank you uh, for everybody, from Amina to you ladies. I really appreciate your time and giving back to this uh, the region here. So thank you so much for that. Really thank good. you for having us. All right, so let's wrap up some stuff here for the region. Uh, so I want to give everyone a heads up uh, for next Friday on 6-5 at 10 a.m., same login. Uh, Dave Donaldson and myself will be running through a virtual train the presenter. So this is actually going to be really tactical around how do you run an effective Zoom from setting expectations to getting some chat on the chat box and how to really take, you know, get the engagement within Zoom. So this will be a tactical training. So when you're doing buyer needs analysis, listings, that type of thing on how you actually control the environment in a Zoom meeting. Moving into the next one we've got here is we also have on June 17th, now this is across KW, uh, a lot of the regional tech trainers that are in the regions are putting on the Evolve Summit. This will be going on from 10.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. It'll be diving into uh, just technology as well as with command. Uh, final, uh, next piece here from some training, you got Inman Connect now. You got Gary Keller will actually be on there. If you want to register for Inman, um, we can send this out later to the market center so your market center leadership will have this information. General attendee, all virtual 149, and select members if you're already part of Inman at $49. Uh, we are having the spring mastermind. So uh, disregard June 17th. It'll be June 8th and June 9th. It'll be a two-day session, uh, 11 to 1 p.m. and then 2 to 4, so you get that hour break for lunch. Uh, if you are a MAPS coaching client, this will be free for you. If not, it is $49. So definitely awesome thing to be going on there, especially going into the mid-year and looking at how to pivot your business and shift into the second half of 2020. Um, just some regional resources that we're providing and upgrading. 
Uh, we've got our YouTube channel, the tech Facebook page that Dave runs, our regional Facebook page. And obviously, as you have seen, we've put out our Instagram uh, is now added as well. Uh, we are a sneak peek on this one. We should have, I'm gonna probably put uh, Dave on the spot, but we are we will have a regional website coming up that'll be a resource for not only our agents, but also the leadership. So stay tuned, that should be up and running, I believe in G and by end of June. Uh, final piece, inspirational wrap up. Know what sparks the light in you, then use that light to illuminate the world. I think this goes back to just satisfaction. If you love what you do, it's never work. If you're out there providing support, training, and getting people either from selling their homes to buying their homes, that if you love what you do and you value what you do to support your clients, it's never really work. So stronger together. And I want to thank everybody for coming out today. So uh, until next week, same time, same place. Thanks, everyone, and have a great weekend.